top five ghosts caught on camera. The Lighthouse Keeper If you're one of the very few people who have never watched BuzzFeed Unsolved on YouTube, the series can basically be summarized like this. It's sort of a ghost hunting show, but not a typical one. The show has two hosts, Ryan and Shane. Now Shane is a diehard skeptic of the paranormal. Anytime there's like any chance of sort of any kind of mechanical failure or just doors in general, people are always like, well, the door opens, so that's ghost. I don't want to argue with you on this. If you're really, if you find it compelling, that's, I'm happy for I you. I do find it compelling. And oh, great. I'm happy, I'm happy for me too. Good. And then there's Ryan, who is the polar opposite. It might even be just a bit too scared of the supernatural. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. In each episode, the two hosts visit allegedly haunted places and investigate to search for real paranormal evidence. This week on BuzzFeed Unsolved, we investigate St. Augustine Lighthouse as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, are ghosts real? No. In this episode, they are investigating the notoriously haunted St. Augustine Lighthouse in Florida. The lighthouse was completed in 1874 and has seen its fair share of tragedy over the nearly 200 years that it has been guiding sailors home from the sea. BuzzFeed Unsolved hosts Ryan and Shane begin their investigation at the historic Lightkeeper's house, which is right beside the lighthouse. People say that they have heard the endless and painful coughing of the spirit of a man named William Harn. He was the very first keeper of the lighthouse back in the 1800s. Harn tragically passed away inside the house of malaria and the lung disease tuberculosis. When they try to reach out to the spirit of William, the two friends capture something truly bizarre. All right, we're gonna give you some silence here, William. If there's anything you'd like to say to us, maybe a message you wish you could have communicated before you left Earth. Huh, I'm gonna set him on these little tiny chairs and make me look like you. Gonna give you some silence right now. Ryan and Shane captured the unexplained sound of someone coughing, just like guests claim to have heard in the past. Could this be the spirit of William who died of tuberculosis? Next, Ryan and Shane finally enter the actual lighthouse, which is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. The best ghost evidence of all time, in my opinion, or at least some of it, has been caught right here in this little rotunda. I mean, they caught an apparition full out just peeking over the railing. It is said that paranormal investigators always have an experience in the lighthouse when they are alone. So to test this theory, both Ryan and Shane will be locked inside separately to investigate. Shane heads in first for his solo investigation, but he doesn't really experience much. All right, so I'm going in there, I'm going to the top. Yeah. And I'm coming back down. Yeah, that's the, what you do in a staircase, yeah. Sounds good. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. This is allegedly the site of a lot of FBAs or full-bodied apparitions. I feel nothing. I really don't. I don't get any vibes. I haven't felt anything strange all night. All right, see you later, dudes. Next, it's Ryan's turn. And now, before we proceed, it should be noted here that during the building of the lighthouse, a young girl named Eliza tragically lost her life while playing at the construction site. Visitors have reported seeing a young girl in a red dress inside the lighthouse who just faded away into thin air right before their eyes. Everyone who's gone in there has seen something, for the most part, if they've gone by themselves. You know what? I'm eager to add my name to that roster. Bye. Why am I leaving? Is 
What the hell? Is that what you just say? Because I'm scared, that's why. Sayonara, you had your chance. Turn off your radio. I almost had a panic attack. Did you? I you said, are wet. I said, who's up here? What's your name? And it just so clear, just Eliza. Ryan is freaked out as he gets some very weird direct responses on his spirit box. One of the answers being Eliza, the name of the child that passed away at the lighthouse. Now Shane, on the other hand, didn't capture anything and is completely unimpressed with the whole location. But after the video is uploaded to YouTube, many viewers pointed out that skeptical Shane might have actually caught the most compelling and absolutely chilling evidence of all. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. Did you see it? Watch again. This is high time for a ghoul to come out and spook me. So far, no ghouls. A dark figure of a man can be seen standing at the bottom of the lighthouse. When the footage is brightened, the man has no distinguishable features and looks more like a black mass than a person. Now, Shane was completely alone inside the lighthouse when he filmed. So just who or what is this? Could it be the ghost of one of the many deceased keepers who are said to haunt the lighthouse? You decide. All right, see you later, dudes. The final night. Alexander Labuzov from Russia says that he's been living in the same apartment for over three years, when suddenly and inexplicably, strange paranormal things begin to happen around his home. Loud, unexplained noises would wake him up in the middle of the night. Things around the house would move on their own, and scariest of all, one night when he was in bed, sound asleep, someone or something suddenly grabbed onto his wrist, squeezing hard. He jerked his arm away and lurched out of bed, searching his room, but there was no one there. He says that the paranormal activity in his apartment just increased over time, until eventually he decided to just move out. So Alex is set to move out of his apartment the next day but he decides to try to record the strange supernatural activity one last time. This video was meant to be Alex's last night in his apartment. First, he sits in front of his camera and explains what's been going on in his apartment. As he's talking, he hears something strange. Something moves somewhere in the apartment and Alex believes it might have been the kitchen cabinet door. He decides to set up his camera in his bedroom and leaves for two hours to meet up with a friend. Alex turns off the light and leaves, but what happens while he's gone is truly bizarre.
Alex returns home and just goes to bed. The next day, he discovers that his landlord is unavailable to pick up his apartment keys. And after reviewing his footage, Alex is unsatisfied with the potato quality video he has recorded in his dark apartment. So, he decides to stay one more night, this time leaving the camera recording but with the lights on. Just like the night before, he again leaves to meet up with a friend. The camera captures something downright creepy. Alex is shocked when he comes home as he discovers that his camera has somehow flipped upside down all on its own. He grabs the camera and begins to film his thoughts on the strange situation. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. I look, Ну вообще жесть. Ну что я могу сказать? Это был последний день, поэтому мы уже. Бля. А до усрачки, ё. Это можно вообще. О, блядь. Так. A pair of legs can be seen standing right behind Alex in the doorway. The legs appear to have no torso and disappear before Alex can even turn around. So, did Alex capture proof of the paranormal in his apartment? Or is it illusion? I leave it up to you to decide. Viewer Videos Ethan Budzinski was on a family vacation in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania when strange things began to happen in his rented Airbnb home. Late one night, Ethan and his family hear the sound of a baby crying from somewhere in the house. Now Ethan's two young nephews are asleep in bed upstairs, so he immediately runs up to check on them only to find that they are both quietly asleep in bed. This occurs several times. Ethan hears crying, then goes upstairs to find the children quietly asleep. So the next time Ethan hears the crying, he pulls out his phone and starts recording.
you here too? Yeah. Yeah. I just went up there. He was sound asleep. Okay, that's what I heard. The eerie sound of a child crying can indeed be heard coming from somewhere upstairs. Both Ethan and a family member hear the sound, but when he heads upstairs to check, just like before, the children are fast asleep and not making a sound. So just where is this strange unexplained crying coming from? Let me know what you think down in the comments. A British Nukes Top 5 viewer who wishes to remain anonymous, we'll call her Jen, says that she had a chilling experience that wasn't paranormal, but was terrifying nonetheless. And as I've personally always said on this channel, real people can be much scarier than anything supernatural. So late one night around midnight, Jen starts receiving messages from a guy on Facebook. At first she plays along, but the messages from the stranger just get creepier and creepier. I'll correct some of the typos and slang and save you from listening to me doing a terrible British accent. But what you see on screen are the actual messages. So at one point, the guy suddenly writes, well, since you're up, uh, can I come and meet you then? Yes, I am mental. I'm on my way down to your house. I'll ring when I'm outside. Thinking he's joking, Jen laughs it off, writing back, You don't even know where I live. And then the guy starts trying to creepily call her on Facebook, because it turns out that he does actually know exactly where she lives. He types, You live next to my granny's house on the corner. Then he continues to call her, and things go from bad to worse, because he actually shows up right in front of her house. Don't make me knock, please, he messages. I'm outside the center window right now. Jen is now understandably completely freaked out. She tells the guy that she is not coming out under any circumstances, but he won't take no for an answer. Is that your window at the front? How do I get in your back garden? Jen replies, you don't, and ends the conversation. But it did not end there. Jen says the disturbed young man stood in front of her house for almost two hours. He eventually left after her family members went outside and told him to leave or they would call the police. So I guess the takeaway is either be careful of who you talk to online or simply Facebook sucks. Susan's Courtside Cafe in Kissimmee, Florida was originally built in 1912, and over most of the last 100 years, the building was actually a small home for many families and individuals. Locals believe that the building the cafe is in is haunted by the spirits of its former residents. Workers at the cafe say that they often hear unexplained noises while working late at night, and both the staff and visitors claim to have seen bizarre shadow figures throughout the restaurant. Nuke's Top 5 viewer Valerie Ann says that she went on a Halloween ghost tour in Kissimmee that stopped at the allegedly haunted Susan's Courtside Cafe, and it seems that the rumors of paranormal activity might be true. Valerie caught this strange footage. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just saw something walk by. Really? Did you see it? It's a little hard to make out, but a dark figure seems to quickly pass through the cafe dining room before just disappearing. Someone in the tour group mentions it, but Valerie Ann is shocked when she discovers that she actually caught the apparition on camera. She says that she has no idea who or what this mysterious figure could be. But what do you think? 
the home of the Jinn. One of the OG Saudi door kicking ghost hunters that I first featured on this channel, Adventurer Allah, is back with an all new YouTube channel. In this live stream, Allah goes to investigate a large abandoned building that is said to be haunted by an evil presence or Jinn. As he broadcasts his exploration live, things take a terrifying turn. Is your mom? I see an animal as roof at a tool, at a tool, at a house. Bismillah. Bismillah. Allahu Akbar. Even though there's no power in the building, the ceiling fan begins to rotate on its own. Then a heavy table falls over right behind Allah. Freaked out, he runs away, retreating to a different section of the large building. But little does Allah know, things are about to get even creepier. Hasbi Allah. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. لا تأخذه سرة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يودوا حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم من كان في هذا المكان سحر فابطل الله أكبر في أحد؟ في أحد في المكان؟ بسم الله حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل فيكم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسي السماوات والأرض A terrifying dark mist-like figure can be seen in a doorway and a pair of crutches aggressively flies across the room right in front of the terrified explorer. He investigates the area, but nothing there. The mysterious dark mist has simply disappeared, but it's not over yet. ومن كان في سحر معقود فطل في صوت في صوت في صوت أعوذ بكلمات الله التمات من شر ما خلق أعوذ بكلمات الله التمات من شر ما خلق بسم الله الذي لا يذر مع اسمه في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العلم وهو السميع العليم Oh my God! 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 Oh my
A plate falls off a table on its own, then another ceiling fan begins to rotate, and a large heavy closet moves as if pushed by some powerful unseen force. Something is thrown at Allah, injuring his foot, and after that, he's had about enough. Allah decides to just get out of there and end his live stream. So did adventurer Allah capture a real haunting by a terrifying jinn, or is it all just a very elaborate hoax. You decide. Return to the Red House. Paranormal investigator Kevin Barranco from the YouTube channel Archivo Extinto returns to explore the historic La Casa Colorada, or the Red House, in Guadalajara, Mexico. The house was built in 1923, and it is said that the remote and secluded location became a place where cults performed dark rituals. Those brave enough to explore the old house claim to have seen witches, demons, and even the skeletal female figure of Santa Muerte, a Mexican saint who is said to wear a long cloak and be the personification of death itself. Now, two months ago, I featured Kevin's first visit to the Red House years ago. While exploring the house with his friends, the group captured something that they simply couldn't explain. <laughs> Aí, hay frases, no sé, quizás unas por vandalismo, otras por sectas, la verdad es que no desconocemos el significado y la verdad es que no, no queremos saber sobre ello. Aquí hace mucho frío, ¿eh? Sí, hace bastante. Aquí hace mucho frío, ¿eh? Sí, hace bastante. Aquí hace mucho frío, ¿eh? Sí. Hace bastante. Cut to two years later. After many requests from his fans, paranormal investigator Kevin returns to the quote, Red House, in hopes of capturing even more paranormal evidence. But this time, he decides to go back all alone. As you might guess, it did not go well. Kevin sets up several static cameras around the house, then he lights three candles and starts to ask questions to who or whatever might be haunting the abandoned home. Kevin is using an English spirit box app and translates the responses to Spanish. Before long, very strange things start to happen. Voy a utilizar... Scarlett, ¿podrías hacerme daño? Throw. Throw. No sé qué es throw. Lo voy a buscar. Lanzar. Ay, cabrón. As Kevin repeats the word throw in Spanish, a heavy piece of rubble is seemingly thrown off the edge of a large hole in the wall. Kevin grabs his camera and walks through the building in search of anything paranormal.
Ghost Hunter's light begins to fail. Then he hears a noise and turns. Without knowing it at the time, he captures something strange in the darkness, quickly darting out of sight. Soon after, Kevin's camera begins to malfunction and things take an even more terrifying turn. My camera is trapped. And vean, vean, vean esto. Mi cámara está trabada. Vean. Está trabada. Se trabó. Está completamente trabada. Vean. Lo voy a apagar. No. Ahí se apagó, pero sigue trabada. ¿Me quieres hacer daño? Voy a cambiarla. Voy a sacarle la pila. Kevin's camera completely locks up and as he changes the battery, a wailing moan can be heard, followed by the mysterious voice of a woman. Yeah. He goes to investigate and captures what appears to be the same mysterious cloaked figure that the Archivo Extinto team captured just two years earlier. Kevin searches the building and the grounds, but he doesn't find anyone or anything. When his equipment continues to malfunction repeatedly, he decides he's had enough. He packs up and just gets out of there. So could it be that Kevin captured the apparition of Santa Muerte, the cloaked Lady of Death? Let me know what you think. You can watch this full three-part investigation over on the YouTube channel, Archivo Extinto. Thanks for watching. Please follow me on the Instagram here and on the Twitter here and even on the, the TikTok. Hopefully I'll see you next week.